let me just uh, go in and let's see, I'm gonna get a uh, redshift hair. Uh, let's see, materials hair, and um, I need its color to be uh, black. So I'm gonna use the um, principal hair shader here. Um, and I'm just going to connect that like so, and then I'm gonna go to its melanin. I'm gonna turn that up and so it's nice and dark. And I'll go ahead and apply this redshift hair to my Cinema 4D hair. Um, now underneath that redshift hair, I have this color. I have this thickness of 0.1 to 0.1. Let's go ahead and uh, press play here, but the color is not coming from the Cinema 4D hair material, it's coming from the principled hair. So what I need to do is this reflection is quite intense. So I actually found that it was easier for me to get what I wanted by turning down the IOR. And uh, then I could um, adjust the, uh, you know, the, the roughness. Um, let's of course uh, refresh and so you know this is still very straight so what I need to do is go into the Cinema 4D hair material and you know apply some style to it. So if you know we're thinking about that type 4 kinky hair then we can see what we need to try and accomplish here. So I'm going to focus on, um, I'm not going to break down all these channels, there's too many. So I'm going to go right to kink and increase its scale. And that's going to give a, you know, that zigzag along the length. Um, and I can, and we can see that at the tip, there will be more of it than at the root. Um, and the frizz and the frizz, however, that can actually change the direction of hair altogether, um, and it tends to be sort of a larger variation. But I'm not seeing a difference here, so I'm going to force a refresh um, to force the geometry to update. And what I started to do was I started to find that I just could only get so far with these channels. Um, you know, one thing that I definitely want is a fade here. So I actually took a Cinema 4D gradient and I, let's close this, and I dropped it on the geometry to see where it would fall on the model. Uh, and then I could adjust its position. Here, let's turn this off. And, uh, and then I can use that to control um, the density or scale or length of the hair. Um, but once I sort of dialed in this position I liked, then I could, excuse me, I could copy this and then let's put that back underneath. And then in the Cinema 4D hair material, I can go to like scale and paste that shader right there. Uh, let's force a refresh. And then we'll see like in front of the ear, and around the temples that we get a much better uh, fade appearance, right? So let's see, I can- oh, Yeah, that's looking great. Yeah, it's much, uh, it's, you know, much more stylized, you know, and using body paint, we could certainly uh, paint our own maps uh, here. So uh, we don't have time for that, but there is actually, already a couple of textures that can be used. So like this asset, this is the, you know, I used hairstyle woman. There's also a, uh, a man and there are some textures that are being used with them as well. So here I have this hair density map, which I can copy. And in the hair object, in the guides and in the hairs under growth, I can paste that. So that's further refining where the 
hairs are uh, seen and not seen. Um, now let's get some more style in here. So let's go to the uh, hair material. And actually, you know what? I'm going to shift gears a bit. I'm going to use some tools. So I'm going to go to my barbershop layout. And I have my hair selection tools on the left. And I like the name of the, of the layout. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and actually, this isn't exactly the one I want. So let me go to my Redshift barber. That's my newer one because it has uh, it, it has everything that I want here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, lives or let's do like a lasso selection and select some of these hairs here. And then I'm going to go with um, the the brush tool with selected only on and with move I can come in and I can sort of pull this up that's actually quite strong so let's turn the strength of this down and there we go now I'm actually doing this on the guides rather than the tips or roots or the individual vertices and the the quality and um, the density of control that you may have here is dependent on the hair objects guides segments so i have a quite a high value here um, because there are some style tools here that we really need high segments for for example if we're doing like a curl um, let me go turn down the number of hairs here and let's uh, start this render uh, and let me zoom in on okay so we got a couple of hair strands here and they're pretty like kinky right so let's uh, turn that down or off and you know when we want like curls we actually don't use this curl um, we instead can achieve it with uh, there's two ways one is the wave so let's see let's force this refresh and in the wave uh, parameter here I'm going to unfold it and I'm going to set the X and Y frequency to essentially the number of um, coils that I want. Uh, and then let's see, I'll turn that down and let's force a refresh. Um, there we go. So now I actually have a coil. One thing I did need to do is on each of these spline graphs, right click and uh, set to maximum because without doing that, the default values, let's just go reset to default for all of these guys. Um, at the default values, we get something very different, right? So what we need to do is we need to unify the free X and Y frequency to the number of coils we want. So let's say 15 and 15. And then um, we actually need to get the actual like coiling the one of these phase values to be 90 degrees and then let's force a refresh there and if there are enough segments then we'll see it but you can see at the base there's far less of that coiling so that's why we need to right click on the spline graphs and choose set to maximum for them and then when we refresh we'll see a more consistent coil from the base to the tip now there's another way to achieve this um, outside of the material. So let me turn that off and stop that there. And let's um, choose a, so like, well, you know what? I'll just do, uh, do them all. So I'll go to guides, select all these guides, and then we have this curl tool here. So I'm gonna select it. And this has a lot of settings, okay? But all I'm interested in here is essentially an angle of zero 
and low numbers for the uh, X and Y height and length, uh, particularly the length. So I'm gonna set the height down to one and the X and Y length to let's say three. And I'll hit apply and I can start to see that now in the guides themselves, I'm getting that coil, but at the base, there's not enough. So I need to, again, set to maximum for these graphs. And now I'm getting um, that, that curling uh, uniformly, uh, you know, across all of the, the hairs. Um, and let's see, let's, wow. Um, so, you know what, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to switch to a, um, one of my example, uh, you know, one of the scenes I was building up um, and do a render. And the thing is, I'm actually using multiple hair objects for different parts of the hair. Um, so I'm just going to uh, start this running real quick. I think this may also be um, similar to this render, uh, which is, you know, very messy. Um, it's me still finding the best route for this style that I'm uh, going after. But I was happy with how close I was uh, I was coming. Um, now I yes, want to thank you.